Hello, like soldiers of Christ. We're living in a time that the gospel is being twisted. Another gospel is being preached because it's more acceptable than the actual true gospel of Jesus Christ, which we should not be ashamed of, for it is the power of God unto salvation to whosoever believes. But people don't want to preach this gospel because it is offensive to some. It is making people feel bad about themselves. In fact, somebody may be telling you, look, you can't be preaching this true word of God because it is offensive. Maybe somebody in your family, a friend, or perhaps Perhaps even someone in the church is telling you that you shouldn't do something because it may upset other people. Well, look, this is nothing new. This has been going on since the time of the apostles. In fact, I want to bring your attention to a verse that Paul writes in Galatians. And chapter one is about this very thing. People have came in and they have perverted the gospel. They are troubling the people. But listen to what the word of God says. Galatians 1 verse 10. Or do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Now the context of this is, there are people preaching another gospel. In fact, Paul gives the warning. Verse eight, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. He repeats it in verse nine. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. Then he goes into verse 10. So if I'm gonna preach this other gospel, is it, am I persuading men or am I gonna persuade God? Do I seek to please men? For if I seek to please men, I'm not a servant of Christ. We do all things to please the Father. According to the will of the Father, we do all things to glorify God and magnify Christ. But there are people that are coming in to this place and they're spreading another gospel. And Paul gives the warning, hey, if anyone, if I preach another gospel, if anyone preaches another gospel, if even an angel from heaven preaches another gospel, let them be accursed. And again, I've said it before, I'll say it again in verse nine. If anyone preaches another gospel other than the true gospel of Jesus Christ, let them be accursed. So maybe you're facing a situation now where God has called you to do something. God has called you to preach the truth, which means just tell someone the truth. However, we do it in love, but we are afraid they're going to get offended. Other people may say, look, you can't, you can't tell them that because they're going to get upset. It's going to offend them. They may get angry with you. Maybe God has called you to go somewhere, maybe a mission trip. Maybe he's called you to go into a prison ministry, a, a school ministry, a children's ministry. Maybe he's called you to go into a certain area and you may have to step outside the church for weeks, months, maybe even years. And someone inside the church your family, a friend, or in the church are telling you, look, you can't do this because it's gonna upset, upset people. People are gonna think you're leaving because of them. They're gonna think that you're leaving because you don't like the preacher. You don't like the Sunday school teacher. You don't like this lady who plays the piano. You don't like the color of her carpet. They're gonna get upset. But Paul is saying in verse 10, are we called to persuade men or God? Are we called to please people? or are we called to please God? Because if we, if our main focus is to be pleasing to people, then we are no longer a servant of Christ because that's not what Christ called us to do. He didn't say go out and be pleasing to everybody, be accepted by everybody. He said, go out and preach the gospel, making disciples of all nations, teaching them what he taught us to do. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. No matter what you face, no matter where you go, he is with us he is in us and he is working through us so let us remain faithful to christ let us be servants of christ that's what paul is getting at here and he gives the warning if anyone preaches another gospel i don't care if i preach another gospel if anyone else preaches another gospel or if an angel from heaven preaches another gospel let them be a curse which means let the curses of god fall upon them then he repeats it in verse nine. And it's like he's saying, I put this in my own little, little way here. He says, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If anyone preaches another gospel, let them be accursed. We are called to persuade people of the gospel so that they will be convicted. But look, this gospel that's being preached now is not the true gospel. It's being twisted. It's being perverted so that other people will be accepted of it. They, they will accept it. So let me let one of those who has been perverting the gospel go ahead and make it clear for you. Go ahead. Oh, I would love to answer that, Larry. Look, let's see. Look, my dude, this gospel, and look, I'm going to try to persuade God here for a moment. God, your gospel is offensive. 
it's not really good enough and it's not really cutting the cheese anymore. I mean, look, here's what we gotta do. We're gonna take this gospel of yours and we're gonna twist it. We're gonna mold it. We're gonna create a message that the world can receive, that the world can relate to. Oh, God loves you. We are all God's children. And if you come to this Jesus, accept Jesus into your heart, pray this prayer. We can pray this prayer and accept Jesus into our heart and we will be very successful. God doesn't want you to sacrifice anything. He wants you to be a success. He wants you to be famous. He wants you to be loved and accepted by the world. And look, this universe that you are a part of, this magnificent universe, God created it for you to show you how much he loves you. Oh, this gospel that we preach, oh, it's very accepted by all people. Because look, my dude, people beat themselves up enough. They don't need me to tell them they're a sinner. They know that they're a sinner. They know that they have broken God's law. They know that someone came and died in their place, that this Jesus loved them so much that he died for them. We don't need to, to put all that other stuff in there that God poured his wrath out on him. We don't need to say that, that God was angry with a sinful world, but he made a way of redemption through his son, Jesus Christ. Look, we don't even have to say that word Christ. That's offensive to people too. Let's stick with Jesus. That's all people wanna hear. This lovely Lamb of God died for you because He loves you, not, not because you're a sinner. He loves you. That's our message, Larry, and that's the message that I'm going to spread, and I'm going to spread it like wildfire, and the world is going to accept it because they will accept my Jesus. I hope this has persuaded God. I'm sure He's a very understandable God. Amen? <laughs> that is the top we are dealing with. They are perverting the gospel. They are preaching this message that is acceptable to everyone. This universalism. You're a part of the universe. The universe is accepted by you. You're accepted by the universe. So accept the universe. They are preaching this financial successful gospel. Come to Jesus and he'll give you all that you want. He will make you a success. He will make you acceptable uh, uh, to all people. You will be loved. You will be accepted. You will be what this, that, and the other. And they make it so appealing that people flock to it. But when they do say that little prayer, they invite Jesus into their heart. They go away with this false conversion. And then at the first sign of trouble, they say, well, the preacher told me that whenever I, play, that whenever I accepted Jesus, I would get all of this great success. My bank account would grow. I would get this, I would get that, but it hasn't happened. So they flee from that. And they were never converted in the first place because they did not hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now look, the main point of this video is to encourage you to remain faithful to the gospel. Remain faithful to your Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the truth, no matter who it offends, no matter who it hurts, because the gospel is the only message with saving power. Why? Because it is God's power unto salvation to whosoever believes it. And that includes anyone. So if God has called you to go anywhere, but someone in the church is telling you, look, I wouldn't do that. It's going to upset Miss Pachinko. She's playing the piano. She's going to think that you left because you don't like her piano playing. Are we here to persuade men or persuade God that he's, he doesn't really know what's going on or his gospel isn't good enough or his calling on our life isn't good enough because it's going to upset people or it's going to offend people. That's what Paul's getting at. Are we supposed to persuade God that he's wrong or are we supposed to persuade people that his gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only message with saving power? and you are wrong in the eyes of an holy and righteous God. You must place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, where you can be made righteous before the Father because you are a sinner. You are in violation to an holy and righteous God. You have broken his law. You need peace with this God. You need to be justified with this God. And the only way you can is through Jesus Christ, who is the only way to the Father. So many don't want to preach that. They preach that there are many ways to God and there's only one way and that is Jesus Christ. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. And then they'll say there's many paths to Jesus. There is not. There's only one path. Only God can draw people to his son and only through his son can they be made right before the Father. This is the gospel. 
and it's the gospel that's being twisted. And that's what Paul is saying. If you do things in order to be accepted by people, in order to please people, you're not really a servant of Christ, but you're a servant to men. You're a servant to people. Look, we are servants to Christ first. Then we serve others. Christ said, I did not come to be served, but I come to be a servant. He came to serve others, but he put the will of his Father first above all things. We must do the same. So if you're going through this time, whether you're a teacher, a preacher, or some sort of example for anyone, we remain faithful to God's word. We remain faithful to the gospel. We remain faithful to our Lord. We are to be servants of Christ. And then we serve others. And the way we serve others is we persuade them of God's truth, of the gospel. And we allow God to do what only he can do. And that is to convict the heart. And that is to save the person, to bring them into a right relationship with them, which is reconciliation. He reconciles people to himself, which means he brings them into a right relationship. Their relationship is now restored with him through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the message that we are to persuade people of. We are not to persuade God that his way is not good enough, so we're going to do it our way in order to not offend people, but in order to please people. When we do that, we are no longer a servant of Christ. We are people pleasers. And then look, I, I know we don't want to offend people. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. We don't want to upset them by thinking that they're the problem. But if God has called us to do something, and by us going and doing it may upset them because they may take it personal. They may think that they have done something wrong. Reassure them, look, I'm not doing this because of something with you. I'm doing this because God has called me to do it. And he has confirmed it through prayer. He has confirmed it through his word that this is what I need to do. And being that I am a servant of Christ, I'm going to do things to be pleasing to my father and to magnify my Lord Jesus Christ. This has nothing to do against you. This has nothing to do because I don't like you or I don't like what you're doing. This is to be pleasing to my Father that I may go out and persuade others of the gospel. So if you're having this fear that by what you're gonna say is gonna offend someone, now look, we say it in love. We say it with compassion and kindness, wanting to affect them in a positive way. But the message of positivity may not be what they need to hear. Maybe they need to hear the truth of God's word. And by this truth, God is going to use it. Whether or not they get offended, look, the gospel was offensive to me. I was offended by a lot of things that people said, even the simple, where are you gonna spend eternity? That was offensive to me. Oh, you're judging me, you're condemning me. We do not judge people of the world because they are already condemned because they do not believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But we judge our brothers and sisters, not in a judgmental way, but judging what they are doing in order to help them move past this. Maybe it's a sin, maybe it's a stumbling block, maybe it's something that's really holding them back. We bring it to their attention in love so that they can move past it and grow in their knowledge of God's word, in their relationship with God, and their relationship with Christ. We do this to build one another up out of love, out of respect to our Father, out of service to our Lord. We persuade people, not God. We please the Father, not people, so that we can be a servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. So pay no mind to what people say. Now accept godly counsel, Accept advice, but always filter it through God's word. Use discernment. Someone may be just telling you something because they have your best interests in mind. Look, if you do this, you may lose your job. You may lose your home. You may go through this. This may happen. You may get attacked. People may not like you. They are only trying to do it in your best interest, but that's not what God has called you to do. He's called you to go whether it's on a mission trip that may cause you to lose your job. Maybe it's giving all you have to the poor, but let us be servants of Christ first. Let us be pleasing to our Father and let us serve others out of our service for Christ with love, kindness, compassion. Let us respect people, be respectable, 
We don't have to go out here and beat them over the head with the Bible. We just bring them God's truth in a loving way. Then let God do what only he can do. Convict the person, save the person, help the person, challenge the person, whatever the case may be. You do your part and God will do his. And a warning, whoever you listen to, whoever it is, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Reddit, whatever the case may be, TV, cable, doesn't matter. Whoever you listen to, if they are bringing you God's word, if they are teaching the gospel, any verse in scripture, you go to God's word yourself and filter their words through the word of God. That includes me. Whatever I say, back it up with scripture. And if it does not line up with scripture, do me a favor. Let me know. Correct me in the comments. If I am wrong on any issue, bring it to my attention in the comments and I will remove it completely or I'll correct it the best I can. We do this to help one another, not to condemn one another or not in a judgmental type of way. If your view is wrong and I correct you using God's word, we should accept that and vice versa. If I'm wrong, I want someone to correct me because I don't want to be stuck in this mentality that I know everything because I don't. There are so many people out here who has forgotten more stuff than I have even learned. They have been studying God's word for decades. We must learn from these people, but we filter everything through God's word. And if God has called us to do it, he will equip us to do it and we must do it. Be a servant of Christ, be pleasing to the father, be to magnify Christ through everything that we do. And if we see someone preaching a false gospel, let us have the boldness and courage to stand up and correct that false gospel. At least get it out there. Look, what they're preaching is false, and it does not matter what anyone else says. We should call out people who preaches a false gospel because that is what we are called to do. We are called to correct. We are called to rebuke those who are trampling the sacrifice of Christ, those who are perverting and twisting the gospel of Christ. So when people are twisting it, perverting it, we call them out. Paul did it. Paul the apostle called people out for preaching a false gospel and even said if anyone preaches a false gospel other than the true gospel of jesus christ let them be a curse is that judging is that condemning them no that's calling out false gospels that's calling out these false preachers and teachers and prophets and apostles that were bringing this title upon themselves so they can have some some sort of ear some sort of audience that will listen to them because they hold a christian title and there are so many thousands like that today tens of thousands like that today that people love and adore. And if you speak out against them, they say, you're judging. That's not judging. That's bringing to people's attention. This is false. Let us turn back to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Look, if people like the apostle Paul were still here today or like that today, which I'm sure there's probably some people out there that are kind of like the apostle Paul, maybe even more intense than the apostle Paul. And I'm sure that they are hated. I'm sure that they are ridiculed. I'm sure they're not allowed to come into churches. And I'm sure that people look at them and say, judge not lest ye be judged. You're not Jesus. You can't judge anybody. And you know, I'm telling you the truth because perhaps you have been told that yourself and you may even said it in a right way, in a loving way. Say, look, I don't agree with this view because it doesn't line up with God's scripture. You need to go to God's word and you really need to study. You need to know more of who God is. You need to know more of our Lord Jesus Christ. You need to change this view so you can go out here and proclaim the true gospel. How dare you say that? That's not very loving. You're not very Christ-like. You're judging me. You condemned me. I am offended. And that's the message that we hear a lot of times from people. It's no longer, oh, wow, that message convicted me. Now, oh, that message offended me. He's very offensive. He's not very Christ-like. And we hear this so often that it pushes people away to actually tell the truth, to preach the truth, to preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ because they're labeled a hater. They're labeled not Christ-like. They're labeled heretics when all they're saying is the truth of God's word. Well, let me not continue too much because you know this is the truth. You know there are a lot of people out there who are twisting the gospel, and if you say anything against them, you're judging, you're condemning them, you're not very Christ-like, you shouldn't be saying things like that because it's offensive, or you shouldn't go on this mission trip because you're going to lose your job or someone's going to get upset by it. Let us not persuade God that he's wrong. Let us not persuade him that his word is too harsh for people to hear, but let us persuade people 
that God's word is the truth, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to whosoever believes. So let us not be ashamed of that gospel. Let us persuade people. Let us be pleasing to God and not so afraid of offending people or hurting their feelings when God will use this message to convict, to save. Let us be servants of Christ and remain faithful to the truth of God's word. Well, I pray that this has been an encouragement for you. And I also pray that it, it has challenged you to not be afraid, to not give in to fear. If it was helpful to you, please like the video to let me know. And also that maybe God can use it to help someone else, to challenge them, or maybe as a warning to someone who is preaching a false gospel other than the true gospel of Jesus Christ. I would also like to ask to please leave your thoughts down in the comments. So what, do you, what, is, what is your experience with people that you are saying the truth to? Do you hear that? Judge not lest ye be judged. But leave down in the comments the experience that you have with people whenever you share the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's be an encouragement to one another. Let's love one another and let's build this community. But remain faithful to Christ. Be a servant of Christ. Be pleasing to your Father. Do all things to glorify your Father in heaven and to magnify your Lord Jesus Christ. Do things to persuade people. Do it in love. Speak it in love, compassion, and kindness. And if you hear someone preaching a false gospel or not preaching the true word of God, bring it to their attention. Do it in love, but bring it to their attention. Correct them. Rebuke them using God's word. Now, I pray that God blesses you. May the grace and mercy of Christ Jesus the Lord be with you always.